And now we have a rather simple desktop mount. Well, there have been some developments in this process since the last video. So I would like to discuss some of the refinements I've made and along the way I'll build the rest of this. At the very beginning, the idea was to have this stationed on the desktop in some kind of base that wouldn't fall over, but I just couldn't come up with a design that was sufficiently simple. Everything just required too much desk space and then that kind of defeats the purpose of having a space-saving lamp. The next approach I took was to try to come up with some kind of mechanism that would clamp to the underside of a desk, but I wanted it to be able to be versatile enough to adjust to just about any desk and to come up with some kind of design that would be simple enough I'm just not good enough. I, I toyed with a couple different ideas, some camera related and leverage related things, but then you know the new problem becomes do you really want to bump your leg off of the underside of it or not worth the trouble. Also another consideration is how many pieces you end up using. So ideally let's just save all of these pieces and just apply them to the top and then it makes this much simpler. If you've already seen the first video, then you'll remember that I said these long ones, the longest parts at the very base of the lamp, were six inches. I've changed that to five and a half inches. And the reason for that is to keep the two inch spacing consistent between the holes. That way you have a center hole that can apply to each side. It's just, if you don't do this, you end up with compatibility issues, so these pieces are three and a half, these are five and a half, and these six inch ones are obsolete. Imagine that this is the leading end of our lamp, and we affix this goofy thing to the end of it. And so the idea here was to have a parallelogram mechanism that gives you additional... <laughs> yeah, I know, it's not that practical, but parallelogram mechanisms are fun to play with. On to the more practical. This is the updated socket. This attachment is seven parts wide, and it's made out of the same plywood material. It's the same dimension as one of the common three and a half inch pieces. And I believe that stops right at the center so that it will accommodate rotation with just a little bit of space. How this particular lamp fits in is you can see it has these little teeth there. And if you squeeze on these arms, it just kind of snaps into the hole. Um, so far, I'm really happy with this. It's a it's a fair amount of work to construct it, but it's consistent with the overall design. I can't remember what term I applied to these in the last video, but they're rotational switches. They change the direction that the lamp rotates at a particular segment. So a more refined construction technique is to build these three at a time. You put the spacers in on the three parts you're working on and bolt them together. And then you just insert the two halves together like this. So you're gluing all six at a time. It's much easier and it's just not as much playing around. It still turns a really solid result. You'll be moving through most of the construction processes with packages of six like this. And in doing so, you can use these circles to trace this radius around your um, parts on the sander. The problem becomes these bolts that wobble on the base of the sander. So a little gizmo like this gives you a flat spot that will more easily ride on the deck of your sander. Once you have the radiuses finished, you would take out one bolt and just spread these apart and you already have the assembly half made. In my opinion, 
the trickiest part of the entire process, maybe this, the table saw cutting for these, but probably more likely getting these center holes so that they're the same from both sides. You wouldn't think that that's difficult, but it is, it's picky. Let me show you the compromise I came up with so that I could produce a consistently well-spaced hole. Okay, so also these, I wanted to do six at a time. And I've randomly grabbed six from my done pile. And they might not align perfectly, but that's because some of the earlier ones that weren't perfect got mixed in. So if you do see some flaws, pay no attention to them. Because at least in theory, this, the following procedure will work for you. The goal here is to drill the holes in the center of these so that they're perfectly centered. Or more specifically, they are centered with respect to these two holes. So you're, go you're going to start with pieces that were reasonably accurately placed with holes three quarters away to center from their ends. Just to be clear, you'll have a hole here and here. Next, you'll be using some of these parts as reference holes. This is how your assembly will turn out. I know it looks like witchcraft, but it's not. It has an easily understandable underlying pattern. Let me break it down. First, let's remove these six spacers. These are only there to take up space. You don't even need to know that they're there at first. This is what you're really looking at. So we just alternate full-sized one, then a short one held to this side, another full-sized one, then a short one held to that side. Full-sized one, short one held to that side. Repeat. Your gut reaction is probably, that's way too complicated, but I assure you, if you try to do all of these processes without building this, you're going to end up spending more time in the long run. One side done. The pieces that are, the pieces that are still free are three of these and three of these. And so everywhere you see one of those, a spacer goes on this side. And everywhere you see a spacer, one of these goes on this side. Stay with me. Now we can stick the entire assembly into the vise and it will straighten up the middle. And now we can drill out the center point right where it is, starting from this side. Because this center hole is marked and placed by this one, and we won't get very far before the one that's coming from this side corrects it, and so on, the whole way through. And you'll have perfectly spaced holes. As an added bonus for going through all this nonsense, you can now stick this thing on the underside and sand all six of these uh, radii on both sides. In summary, in terms of net time spent, this thing probably pays off. And it just makes a much nicer end product.
I had started with a first row of seven parts, but I'm going to add one more set to this side just to make it symmetrical. Also, I'm going to replace this second row with longer parts, just like I did in the ceiling mount version. It's just so highly customizable. This configuration seems right for now, but I'm sure I'll probably change it later. Moving forward, I have a switch. Then I have one, two, three common sections, another switch, and then one, two common sections before the lamp. In case I haven't mentioned this yet, sometimes you'll have a lot of trouble getting them together. And you wouldn't think it's the case, but it's actually this bolt back here. If you loosen that up, it lets the fingers spread apart and then it will usually be a bit more forgiving so that you can get them in. Now tighten and look, it's working already. I have trouble believing that it's this effective. You have to see this. and I ended up putting the short section back for no other reason than I like the curve that it has with the shorter sections. It looks more organic. As of yet, there's no switch, but uh, tinkering is the nature of this thing. <laughs> if you like to tinker, this is perfect for you. It has over 9,000 positions, but you have to kind of learn how it works. It's nice that it can rotate so easily on the clamp itself that gives it a lot of flexibility. If you don't mind, it's time for me to go. I have some more important things to tinker with now. But before I do go, two more things to mention. You'll notice that the lamp's deflection isn't so bad as long as we just use a regular light bulb. If you use a heavy spotlight like I did in the ceiling one, it's a little bit worse. But a lot of that goes away by tightening up the clamp. Further, any unused space under here, if you fill it up with wood, it will bend less because there's less bar sticking up from the table and the bar on the clamp is what really is bending. The other thing is conduit. I kind of wanted to put the wire in this cool looking metallic conduit but it doesn't bend enough and so it restricts motion when we get to bends that are just way too tight like this. If you have any ideas for a better conduit solution, I'd love to hear them. All right, see you later. One of the problems with presenting an idea like this to a mass audience is that in your presentation, you have to find a balance between what's a healthy amount of, you know, enthusiasm for your project and then what becomes dishonesty, sensationalism. That said, this has been one of those projects that you can't easily tell just by watching the video, but it's a pretty useful thing to have.